I'm going to be covering a game from an indie studio called Zombie Road. It's a role-playing game made by a Hungarian-based company called Dragon Mount Press. The game has been in a year and a half of development and has just started crowdfunding where it has hit already its goal of 8,000 euros. The game itself is sort of a zombie apocalypse road trip game, so keep that in mind as I go forward telling you about the setting. So a quick overview of the setting. Within about three weeks, the entire world fell apart as zombies appeared and the governments at the time were not ready to deal with that. I'm a little bit triggered from COVID, but hey, that's where we're starting. <laughs> so a zombie bite takes about 18 to 36 hours to kill the individual and turn them into a zombie. Uh, at 12 hours, most survivors are going to put down the infected person and probably burn the body so that it doesn't come back as a zombie. Uh, most zombies start off as slow and clumsy, but early on a zombie can be a bit faster if it hasn't decayed enough yet. They are typically drawn to living people and will not bite people who are already dead because they want to spread the infection instinctually. They know that they cannot swim and they can't really do complex tasks, so interestingly enough, it states here that they will avoid large bodies of water that they can't like wade across and things of that nature. Now, there are things called echoes that are special zombies, usually along with being a runner at the start. A zombie has this echo of the previous life they, they lived and they'll repeat, repeat important phrases from a person's life. This will act as a lure to bring people in because usually it's stuff like, help me, help me or it could act as a lure for other zombies as those zombies hear the noise and start to congregate around the echo, essentially. Now, there are more supernatural zombies or more mutated zombies. I'll go over them later, but as far as the world itself goes, the factions within it for the survivors have two main ones. You have the hopeful, who are the people who are trying to find a cure for the zombie outbreak, and kill as many zombies as possible to sort of bring a sense, some semblance of normalcy back to the world. Then you have the governed, who are people who have created these quarantine zone-like cities that are usually authoritarian governments that are trying to like keep people oppressed within their little society so that they can have control and essentially create sort of like black markets and things of that nature within the city to keep people complacent. Then you have other sort of factions that are more explored upon in later on if you want to make this a huge campaign, which are the blinded, who are people who are religiously fanatic to the idea that this zombie apocalypse is a punishment from God and that humanity needs to repent for their sins. After that, you have the wild ones who are the group of people who've gone crazy after the apocalypse and are just sort of like enjoying life to the limit as much as they can before they die essentially they're usually led by someone who's like an alpha quote unquote who's like sort of in charge but really it's sort of like an anarchist like mob essentially and mob as in like a bunch of people just running around together as opposed to mob like a criminal organization people who are more like a mob are the traders guild poor businessmen who are just trying to profit off of the apocalypse and these people will use their like power through like trading and like whatever constitutes money in the future, put out bounties for people that they don't like, or maybe even like deal with the governed and hire out some individuals to maybe take out some hopefuls because maybe the traders guild don't want the world returning to what it was like before because they want to profit from what they know now. Now, mechanically, the game runs on six-sided dice. You roll a single six-sided die, and depending on your result, you understand if it's a failure, a success, or a success with a disadvantage. Now, when you roll this six-sided dice, a result of one to four is a failure, five is a success with disadvantage, and a six plus is a success. Now, you do add stats and other attributes to your character to your die roll so for instance if you have a brains of one and a i don't know an expert an experience in medicine suddenly you have a plus two to the roll 
So instead of it being a one through four, it is now a one through two that's a failure, and a three will be a success with disadvantage, and anything a four or higher is a success. So you can really like build up your character in that way, especially when you're le- when you begin to level up your character. Your stats are sort of separated into three main things. You have brains and bronze, then you have your experiences, and then you have your endurance. So your brains and bronze are sort of your attributes, your experience are sort of your skills, and then your endurance are sort of like your action points or health points. You can reduce your endurance by one to get a plus one to your roll, for instance, but that means you're taking away some of your health in order to do that because you're pushing yourself to the limit, essentially. Now your endurance stat starts at five for everyone, and then you have a maximum of ten for it. Now you can regain endurance through multiple ways. If you roll a six on a die, and then you then you can confirm to see if you get more endurance. In this, when you roll a six, you now roll again, and if it gets a five or a six, you get another endurance. Additionally, there are things called tally marks, which are your character's personal goal. This can be something like how many zombies you've killed, or something like how many uh, tchotchkes you found in in the wilderness. Uh, a good example of this is uh, Tallahassee from Zombieland. You can also reveal a flashback to the rest of the group once per day. So a flashback is essentially a piece of your character's backstory. And then you can also reveal a memento that you have to a player and tell the backstory of that memento. That is also only once per day, and you can do it to essentially give yourself more endurance. There's also taking drugs, so medication can give you endurance as well. However, if you take medication three times within a day, uh, you can develop an addiction. An addiction is a disadvantage. Disadvantages, as you like accumulate them, are essentially a minus one to all rolls. So disadvantages can be injury, illness, or exhaustion. I'm not going to cover the de- the mechanics in detail, just so you know. I'm only going to be covering what I think is relevant for you to decide whether or not you want to back this game or support it or buy it if it's already been uh, been out for a while. Now, as we get further down in here in the rules, how do you do damage? Well, damage is essentially going to lower your endurance. If your endurance reaches zero, you become incapacitated. Uh, productive gear gives you integrity which replaces your endurance but once integrity goes to zero then the damage goes straight to your endurance only zombies or weapons can cause damage an unarmed attack by a survivor either causes an opponent to lose an action their next turn or gives a minus one penalty to their next roll so if you start getting into a fist fight you don't have to worry about accidentally killing someone unlike reality uh, <laughs> if your endurance is lowered by a zombie attack uh, the zombie then gets what is essentially an, a new action that is called the bite action, which allows them to follow up that attack with a bite. And if that bite succeeds, you need to roll a die to see if you're infected. Or the GM can do it secretly. So they would roll a, a d6, and on a 1 to a 2, one to two you are infected. A 3 to 4, a limb is infected, and if it isn't amputated within an hour, you are infected completely and will turn into a zombie. And on a five or a six, you're lucky. It, they do suggest in the book that if a player does get hit with a bite, you don't mention that the character was bitten. Instead, you say that they have a pain, sharp pain in their side or in their limb or something of that nature as the zombie is like furious, furiously attacking. Them. This can be so you don't need to say that they were bitten, but you can say that the zombie like overwhelmed the player and they're not sure what happened essentially now you only get two actions per turn uh an attack action is an action that i looked into there are a lot of actions listed another action that you can have is the aim action if you aim before attacking a zombie that means that you're doing a headshot which is an insta kill on most zombies i'll get into that in a second i think the My favorite part of this book is the list of zombies, so just follow me here for a little bit. Uh, You can, when you aim, you can either do plus one to hit, 
or plus one to damage as well. If you're attacking a zombie, I assume you're going to do plus one, plus one to hit instead of damage because that's going to do extra. That's going to do your instant kill, and you won't have to worry about that. Attack actions are simple. You roll your six sided die, and then you add your uh, modifiers. If your roll is a five, it's a success with disadvantage. If it's better, it's a normal success. And then afterwards, you're going to roll your damage, which is just a single d6. And that'll determine how much damage is done to your, your opponent. Unless you're headshotting a zombie. Now, let's get into the different types of zombies here. The different types of zombies we have are the basic zombie, which for their stats are essentially... Uh, three endurance, so they only have three hit points. They have a plus two to brawn. They have two actions, four if they're a runner type uh, zombie. And then if they do damage to a player, they can then use their next action to bite that player and infect them, essentially. Now, there are the specialty type of zombies, the special mutated or variant zombies that we have. We have the bloated zombies who are your sort of big tanky like zombies that can take more hits and have super strength. And now this is something that a lot of the other zombies are missing, but I see other zombies do have this ability. So every one of the zombie stat lines uh, mentions the headshot. If a player takes an aimed action to the head, the zombie is going to be insta-killed. But the bloated zombies and a few others don't have that stipulation. Which makes me think that if they do get headshot shotted, they will not die instantly. But in any case, that was the bloated. Then we have the speaker zombies, who are the zombies that retain their memories after being infected so that they parrot what they would be have been thinking in real life. Usually a, a few stock phrases and things like that that are important to the zombies like original self then you have the hordes of zombies which are a collection of a large number of zombies from i believe it's like 30 to a thousand zombies it could be then you have the molten zombie which are zombies that have sort of mutated into being landmines their whole thing is that they'll usually sneak up on people because they lie dormant in an area and people won't notice that they're there and then they'll sort of rise up and then if they want to like they'll take in air or some sort of chemical reaction will happen that causes them to explode uh, infecting everyone who's hit with the shrapnel essentially potentially infecting people with the shrapnel that sounds like a good way to do a tpk in any case then you have the acid zombie they are a zombie that their blood is acidic, probably due to exposure to chemicals. And now this can cause harm to humans who do melee attacks to them. So if you slice them up, the acid is going to get on you. Or if you're like shooting them at range, even if you're doing damage to them, the acid is going to give off fumes that are going to sort of act as cover for the zombie. Uh, then you have the yapping zombies who are zombies that are missing their lower jaw, so they're always, like, sort of causing noise to happen, which is, like, this loud, guttural yapping from all the uh, air trying to go through their jaw, essentially, <laughs> that doesn't exist. And uh, they are essentially going to attract other zombies to their location and going to make a lot of noise. The maximum amount of endurance zombies have sort of ranges between, like, 3 to 14 endurance from what I've seen. In most cases, except for the hordes who are the exception, in which case they have like one endurance per zombie in their group, which means they go from about 30 to 1,000 endurance depending on how your GM is running them. The, zo the horde zombies themselves are scary because if you get into them, they'll actually tear your players apart in an instant kill move. So really, your players are trying to avoid them. They're slow moving because they're a, a horde, but they can be very scary. <laughs> there are some limitations placed on them, so they're not killing everyone. As far as the human characters go that you can have, uh, there are rules for allies, NPCs, and things of that nature. There are also human enemies. So you have things like the cannibals, who are people who 
obviously eat other people. Then you have raiders, the paramilitary, which is used for both, I believe, the hopeful and the governed type of characters. Then you have the leaders, who are the people that are the leaders of those particular groups. And then you have the archbishops, who are the leaders of the blinded and usually have access to flamethrowers and things. The alpha wild, who are the leaders of the wild ones. And guild bounty hunters, who are under the purview of the Traders Guild. So if you start messing with the Traders Guild, like stealing from them, maybe some bounty hunters are going to be sent after you. Now, character creation is pretty simple from what I've seen. Uh, at character creation, you have about six questions you need to answer. Uh, there's sort of six categories of questions. Like the first one is, how did you react to the apocalypse when you first realized it was the end of the world? Um, I sort of simplified it myself, but it's like, uh, when did you find out about the apocalypse happening? Uh, how did you find out about it through like what form, like radio or TV? And then it's like, how did you feel about it? Which is all just one question. The next question was, how did your team form and how long ago was it? Uh, what activities does your team do to survive? Uh, how did you first encounter with a zombie affect you? Um, what was the worst thing you've ever had to do to survive? And what is a temptation you cannot resist? And these sort of flesh out your character, but also give you access to ways to sort of expose parts of your character's backstory to gain endurance during the game. And then uh, you have determine your tally marks, something that you keep track of to keep sane, which is stuff like how many zombies you've killed, how many special items you've scavenged, and how many books you've saved, maybe. Now, you can allocate uh, two points across either your experiences, combat actions, brains, or bronze. At character creation, you can only have a maximum of plus one to brains or bronze, but you can spend two points on a single experience or combat action. So, for instance, if I wanted to have medicine as my, uh, as my experience, which the example experiences they give are crafting, diplomacy, medicine, observation, and stealth. I could give myself plus two to medicine, but I will only have a zero in brains and bronze. But at the very least, I'd be able to heal people very easily at that point. Or at least a lot better than before. <laughs> now, um, after you've done that, uh, if your character is being based on yourself, uh, you can ask such a, you can do stuff like modify your character by giving you an extra bonus. Uh, the examples they give are stuff like if you were trained in martial arts, you gain a plus one to a specific combat action, like uh, maybe dodging or something. And then if you are an actor, you maybe get a plus one to your diplomacy bonus uh, ex experience on top of your normal, how, however much you've put into it start so it gives you a little bit extra it's it seems to be only plus one to one thing so essentially you're getting two points to spend on an experience combat action brains or bronze and then plus one extra depending on your character's backstory after that you can write a few phrases down that will be what your character will echo when your character dies because your characters are have a seem to be pretty squishy if you're not careful <laughs> uh for your starting so have some important phrases written down in case you die, your character turns into a zombie and starts echoing uh and then you have your starting gear which is a backpack which can carry up to like four specifically si sized items and then you can have a melee weapon or a ranged weapon uh ammunition or protective gear that has integrity i believe two or three which is essentially your extra health points uh, before you start taking damage to your endurance. And then you get two of either bandages, medicine, or drugs, which each have three uses. So you'll have like six uses of the this medicine, um, six uses of this medicine at the start of game. And then you've got one bottle of water that has four, that can carry four uh, daily uses of water and one provision pack, which has seven days worth of rations. And then any stuff that's sort of in your pocket from when the zombie apocalypse happened. This can be stuff like a pocket knife, a compass, 
maybe a cell phone, but the cell phone's not working, and things of that nature. Uh, leveling up grants you some different benefits at each level, um, such as bonuses to stats, actions, or experience, including uh, extra max endurance. So you can raise your maximum endurance up a bit as well. So based on what we've seen from this game, I have a few thoughts. Uh, number one, Dragon Mount Press is a start new com game company. They have like one game I could find, um, which it, you get if you um, sign up for their newsletter on their website. I'll put a link in the description below. But additionally, I, I wasn't able to find any other games except for this one. However, they did send me a preview copy, which for the most part looks um, mostly done. There are some things with the layout, um, some art that hasn't been included yet, but I'm using a beta. I, I'm reading a beta version of the game. So there's probably a lot of stuff that's going to be updated um, soon. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. But from what I can tell, I'm not worried that they won't be able to deliver the PDF copy of this uh, product. I'm not sure about physical copies of a game because that can be difficult for some people. Um, I suggest reading their uh, crowdfunding page, which I'll put a link in the description below as well about that if you want to check it out and see for yourself if you think you want to get a physical version of the, the book. It does seem like they have a lot of interest in it. Um, as far as the crowdfunding campaign has gone, there are 145 backers and about eight, they've collected about $8,776, or sorry, uh, euros for the product. And they have a lot of stuff like retailer copies and things of that nature. Uh, if you back at higher levels, you can include stuff like name a enemy or NPC after yourself in the book and things of that nature. So check it out if you if you like zombies. Um, I think if I were to give this a rating, I'd 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 give it a one shot. Honestly, um, I maybe I would play it for Halloween for a, for one year. Like maybe uh, three or four sessions, which would be like a short campaign. But essentially, I can see, I can see the benefit of playing it. It's kind of a what I would call a more like simplified RPG, but it does have a lot of nuance in some places. But it's definitely reminiscent of a few games I've played, like uh, like Tiny Frontiers and things of that nature. If you've ever heard of those, I'll put a link somewhere maybe to that in the doobly-doo up here. But please let me know what you think and put, put a comment down below if you like what you've heard and like the video if you got this far because, hey, something was interesting to you at some point in this. <laughs> and thank you so much and we'll talk again soon.